This episode of Star Wars Republic is brought to you by, well, of course, you. If you want to learn more about how you can support the show, go to patreon.com slash the arena underscore podcast. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Star Wars Republic, our show on everything Star Wars. And this is our uh, The Book of Boba Fett, Chapter 3, The Streets of Mos Espa reaction. So we'll be talking about uh, the third episode of The Book of Boba Fett on our show tonight. And uh, just some warnings. We're going to be, of course, this is a spoiler-filled reaction episode, as we usually do. So uh, if you haven't watched Chapter 3 of the Book of Boba, Boba Fett yet, uh, please go and watch it before uh, checking out this video. And of course, this video will be going up to our Patreon at patreon.com slash the arena underscore podcast for the first two days for all of you patrons in early access and ad free, of course. And then after that, it will go public and to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash the arena productions. So I'm your host, Expat, along with my co-host, Burley of Burleyman Gaming. Burley, chapter three, man. Let's dive into awesome. it. How was Alrighty. it? I'm gonna I'm I, gonna I throw really, it right I, at you. How how uh, was this episode compared to chapter one and chapter two? See, I know we've you and I have briefly talked off off recording on this. Yeah. I kind of think this is my second favorite episode. Episode two is the best of the, of yeah. the three. Yeah, me too. I which agree. Is weird to, which is weird to say for Star Wars. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I, like, I, I, I had a blast watching this. Like, I love this because I put this up on my nice new 4K TV. So it was just nice, nice to just sit there. And nice. then there are a few times, I'm not going to lie, I'd be like, was that what I think it was? Hit the rewind 10 seconds on <laughs> Disney Plus and rewatch it. Yeah, yeah. 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 Episode or chapter. It, it's it's funny. I keep seeing episodes, but Disney Plus mm -hmm. is, is making them into chapters. You know? So like mm -hmm. chapters from a book, of course, because this is the book of Boba Fett. So, uh, yeah, I mean, chapter two is my favorite, obviously. Uh, I think maybe chapter one and chapter three, the, the latest one, are probably pretty similar in nature i mean you know him escaping from the sarlacc pit in chapter one i mean that that was an amazing feat so oh yeah but uh anyway let's jump into chapter three so again the very beginning of the episode burley we get that we get that panoramic view of jabba's palace outside and then we see mm -hmm. the spiders walking around mm -hmm. with the brains you know, yeah, uh, and those, of course, uh, those spiders. There was one in, of course, Return of the Jedi as well. So when Luke was entering Jabba's palace, there. So uh, yeah, we see that, and of course, we get Boba Fett and Finnick. They're, uh, of course, planning how to maintain Jabba's, you know, empire, so to speak. <laughs> And then we get this guy come in. He's like a watermonger. So obviously oh. on Tatooine, water is like a, a really heavy commodity on the planet. I mean, everybody's trying to get water, obviously, because Tatooine's a very dry desert planet. So uh, this guy, his name's uh, Lortha Pale. Lortha Pale or Peel? I, I, I forget uh, during the episode. It, but, it's, uh, it, it's Pale, if pale. I'm not mistaken. Yeah, Lortha it's Pale. Actually a, it, it's played by uh, Stephen Root. Yeah, yeah. So he asks Boba to punish these, like, this gang of cyborgs, you know, like, uh, and we'll talk about that later, but, uh, you know, these, uh, uh, people on the streets of Mos Espa that have basically, you know, uh, 
gotten kind of like cyberpunk in a sense, you know, cyberpunk yeah. 2077, where everybody's getting cybernetic implants. So just imagine <laughs> this, this kind of this gang of, of, uh, you know, cyborgs running around. So he wants Boba to punish them because they've been stealing his water, so to speak. Yeah. What did you think of that? I mean, what did you think of this, yeah. uh, this character? Uh, this character was a good little thing because you, you, you get notes of him. And I love when he's talking. Uh -huh. Like Boba just, you can early on, him and Finnick, they just do not give two shits. Yeah. Yeah. And this guy's like calling him out. And you can just see like Boba, he's just like, you really want to say this? And then he's like, oh, he's pandering on. And Boba's just like, yeah, I'll spit the goddamn thing out. Just spit it out here. Yeah, and he's like telling Boba Fett the the people in Mos Espa they don't respect you yet. Yeah, yeah. so re, 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 real smart to say that, and then like Fiddick's like basically her her line of every uh, show episode is I just sure. tell. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so of course he agrees to go, you know, investigate and check out what's going on and everything. So he finds out that these cyborgs basically they're out of work you know they're unemployed and this this guy um you know lortha he has been overcharging for water from what yeah. the cyborgs started to tell boba you know it's like they're they're charged this guy's charging a huge price you know like 10 times what it should be and it's like boba is like these people have to pay for money or pay for water. You know, <laughs> it's like, Jesus Christ, you know, <laughs> but then he decides to hire these cyborgs, you know, and then he just uh, throws some money at the guy and says, okay, you know, everything's been paid. Just shut up now. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, well, I, I like that because he's like the, the water merchant is just trying to be like, I'm not scum. They owe me money for water. You're charging that much for water. Take the five hundred I just gave you, and consider it done. Yeah, yeah. Like he is, he and he's like, he's trying to be like, well, I have to make money and give something. And Boba's he, like, he's just trying to do, like, right. and Boba is just not having any of it. And right. I like that Boba, like, because you think they're gonna be like a giant fight scene when he meets these cyborgs because he's got him, Finnick, the two uh, fuck, Gamorians, yeah. The Gamorrean Gamorrean guard. I, I, yeah. I, I, I feel bad that I can never remember that. No. He's got them with a, and they're they and they're all ready to go and fight. Right. It's kind of nice that they didn't just have like, oh, we're not just gonna have a brawl here. Yeah. We're, we sat, we talked things out, and then Boba's now getting more muscle for him. Right. So that way if if ever he gets attacked again, he's got some allies. Right, right. So he basically employs these cyborgs to be enforcers for him. So, so anyway, he goes back and then we see him again, Boba in the BAFTA tank, of course. Mm -hmm. And we go back to the memories, of course, uh, you know, flashbacks again. And uh, he goes away from the Tuscans on the, on that huge mount. Mm -hmm. And he goes to the Pikes to get their toll you know uh because basically he's working on behalf of the sand people mm -hmm. and telling the pikes there hey look um you know this is their native land you're gonna have to pay a toll but then he goes back to the camp and what happened burley <laughs> Yeah, but before we get there, when he's yeah. negotiating that toll, you can, they're like With the pikes. Yeah, the, the pikes. The pikes are like, well, we already pay someone else that says it's their land, and then they're yeah. like, they've got their own thing, and 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 yeah. Boba's like, yeah, well, us and the Tuskeds, I've trained them up. Yeah, we can handle them, no problem. Just pay yeah, us the technologies will, and everything. So we, yeah. And we, yeah, we 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 can deal with that. And the pikes yeah. are like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So they send him on his way, and he's yeah. coming back. And you just see the the, the Tuscan Raider like encampment. I'm going to call it an encampment. It's probably the best uh, term for it. It's just destroyed. Yeah, completely and, obliterated. Yeah. 
and you get the the two line logo is burned in and you see that like you see you see it's been destroyed and he finds like a bunch of their weapons there yeah the nikto gang mm-hmm. that's what they're called the nikto gang yeah so the this gang from the previous episode where they were mm-hmm. uh you know uh looting and pillaging uh so uh yeah um so he burns boba burns the bodies of those left over of the tuscans and and it seems like the uh the tuscan leader was among them because he found mm-hmm. that uh that staff of his as well so uh but what's interesting in that though burley is we didn't see that uh the one guy that was training or the one tuscan that was training boba in the first two chapters uh we didn't see him among the dead so no. who knows maybe he's still maybe he got away and the same with the child maybe they mm-hmm. got away uh we don't or know they, if they could all be ta- of them ta- were taken out. prison maybe uh, yeah. Uh, yeah you you never know yeah so that could be in a uh you know a future episode we might or future chapter we, we might see of boba rescuing some of them uh yeah. we shall see but uh so anyway yeah. uh of course, Boba is in the BAFTA tank, and then mm-hmm. just dun, 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 all of a sudden, mm-hmm. that Chrysanthemum guy, the Wookie, and I, I just want to uh, apologize. Last week, I I, I, I thought that Chrysanthemum was a different species that was, you know, like very closely related to the Wookies, but no, he's a Wookie. So uh, yeah, Chrysanthemum comes in and just. <laughs> Oh man, just pulls him out of that BAFTA tank, you know, and all he's got is his shorts on. And yeah. uh the fight ensues, right, Burley? Oh yeah, like I, I love that because you didn't yeah. when you when you're watching, you don't see that because you're yeah. thinking, oh, it'll just slowly transition from the whole Tuscan Raider stuff. Right, and then but, boom. Yeah. boom. <laughs> yes. That Wookiee pulls up. Like, how did that Wookiee get in there? Yeah. Get yeah. not noticed by Finnick, the two or the, or the, the guards, cyborg. yeah. Yeah, all the guards, all the droids, and everything. Yeah, like they really need to do a security check because, like, yeah, not yeah. to say that Wookies can't be stealthy, but those things, that thing's huge. It, oh yeah, it's gonna make footsteps. Like you're gonna hear those footsteps as he's walking. Oh yeah, he was he was kicking ass, man. I mean, he he almost killed one of those Gamorrean guards. I mean, afterwards, mm-hmm. Boba had to put mm-hmm. that Gamorrean guard into his BAFTA tank for for healing. I mean, yeah, yeah, he was he was whooping them all until obviously mm-hmm. he gets dropped into the ranker pit, the empty ranker pit there. And that's how they mm-hmm. basically got saved. So Well well I like yeah. I like that fight scene because you got Boba because he doesn't have he's he's holding him back by his own, no weapons, and then he eventually gets the the staff weapon. Right. Uh and using that and doing it and then the the all his allies start coming in, the cyborg guards, and then the two Gorians come in, and right. he bites one of them. And yeah. they, they stab that Wookiee. That Wookiee ain't going down. And right. it's only until, like, Finnick gets, uh, op- comes in, opens up the one trap door, traps the yeah. Wookiee down there. Yep. And then you, you see, because you see Boba cares for his own people. He's looking around. Right. And then it's like, the Gorian, go, take him to my healing tank. Whereas yeah. you know, if this was Jabba, Jabba right. would have been like, just shoot him and he's dead. Yep, just kill them all. And, yeah. Well, well, yeah. Well, speaking of Jabba, of course, after this, so the, the uh, of course, Chrysanthemum gets you know uh, captured, obviously, by mm-hmm. getting dropped into the into the pit. But uh, then we get the twins. They come out to you know to meet Boba be- there before, at the palace. Be- before we get the to the twins. You yeah. have Bo- Boba and Finnick eating the giant meal. And yeah, so yeah, much yeah. food, and yeah. Finnick like Boba's like want. You could see he's still got the rage. Yeah, and she's yeah. like, no, 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 just let them come to you. Let them make the next move. You've got that right. Wookie. You've got something. Yeah, they're gonna come and do something. Right, just and you she's wait. just sitting and then, there and just chewing on the food and everything, and just mm-hmm. relaxing. You know. <laughs> Yeah, Bo- Bulba's just not having any of it. He just, yeah. you could tell, like, if he could right now, he would go grab his blaster, find the huts, shoot one of them, and probably take the tail end of the other one and strangle the other one with it. 
Like you, you, you could just see it in his eyes. He's got that rage. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. But of course, then the twins come and they, they just straight up directly say, yeah, we sent Chrysanthemum to kill you. <laughs> you know? And if, mm-hmm. if that were me, then right then and there, I would have blasted Chrysanthemum, killed him. And I would have killed the twins, both of them right where they right where they Mm -hmm. sat but then again boba you know it's Mm -hmm. yeah he's trying to project you know you know his own ways of doing things and but the coolest thing of what happened next was of course the twins gave him a gift you know because they were saying we're we're leaving Tatooine, you know and you probably should do the same but anyway this is a a token of our you know uh kind of like apology or whatever yeah, and he gets a, a a brand new, fresh, live rancor. Yeah. It's pretty cool, eh? <laughs> oh, I I love seeing a rancor. It was like, oh, this is cool. Yeah. And then you you see, but I love that the huts come up, but they're like, yeah, we we sent the Wookiee to kill you. Yeah. So you know, yeah, sorry, but we're we're gonna leave because this place is becoming a war zone. And yeah. there's no yeah. no 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 benefit to our death. If you're smart, you're gonna get out of Tatooine as fast as you can. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, there's a a ranker trainer with it, or of course, and then they <laughs> put it in the pit, and it's like, of course, it's muzzled and co- his eyes are covered and everything. But we learn a lot about rankers in this in this chapter about you know they're. <laughs> emotional creatures and all and they they bond with their owners and and so you know what boba's gonna do with this thing he's gonna bond with this rancor and you know you know that he's gonna put this rancor to use in the the upcoming chapters i just know it i just know it oh (laughs) oh yeah they're good they're they're, they're so setting this up well for that yeah but one little thing uh Mm -hmm. before all that is like they tell them yeah no, no no Because he's like, oh, fine, you're giving me this, you're giving me the Rancor, and you're giving me Daddy Trail to help trade it and and all that. But he's like, do you want the Wookiee? They're like, ah, you can go sell them. And we bought them from some Gladiator thing. Yeah. And and Boba lets out that Wookiee. I would love for that Wookiee. We just see a a scene Uh, later on. He's killing the Huts. Yeah. Chris Hansen. Yeah. 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 Chris That would be cool. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I have a feeling that he's going to become employed by Boba at some point, I think, you know? Yeah. Uh, so anyway, so, uh, Finnick, uh, and, you know, uh, Boba and the, the cyborg gu- guards go back into most es- most Espa and, uh, they're going to question the mayor again. So they have to go back to the mm-hmm. mayor's office and then that guy, the major domo guy, you know, he tries to brush them off again as they come in, you know, and then they're about to kill him, basically. And then he opens the door and then he goes in like he's saying, oh, OK, I'll have to talk to the mayor and see if, you know, we can set up this appointment now. But then he locks the door, obviously, and he escapes and the mayor had escaped, you know, and then the cyborgs go on this chase throughout the streets of Mos Espa. And Burley, I have to admit for me, that was the the weakest part of the episode because those Mm -hmm. bike speeders that those cyborgs were on Mm -hmm. the different colors and everything. I, I felt like when I was watching the episode, I'm like, am I watching back to the future two or something? (laughs) It's like how colorful, you know, those bikes were just, Mm -hmm. they felt so out of place, you know? You would you would think that those type of bikes with those type of colors would be on Coruscant or something? You yeah, know? not not in the uh, color drawn out. To, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, th- this is the weakest part of the, the the episode. I I can agree, but the thing is, yeah. you get all that other like emotional stuff with the Rancor and learning and seeing Bobo's other sides, and you get all yeah, the other of stuff course. from Obviously. earlier that really strengthen this episode. This is yeah, this is the weakest thing. Like this was the thing of like. You, you knew they were going to catch the mayor. You knew yeah. Yeah, the mayor's assistant. I yeah, love it when he, Domo, he realizes yeah. he's caught. He's just yeah. like, oh, fuck. Yeah. Does he know? Yeah. 
He know he knows Boba <laughs> isn't gonna just. <laughs> This is my prediction right now, Burley. We talked about this, you know, before we started taping this episode. That major domo guy, he's going to be the ranker's first meal. Yeah. <laughs> that he is going to feed that guy to the ranker. I'm telling you right now, no. this, that, it's going to happen. Watch, watch. Yeah, we'll see. But uh, anyway, no. so so basically, the mayor is working for the Pikes. Mm-hmm. And uh, at the end of the episode, of course, the cyborgs are reporting, you know, uh, to Boba, you know, about, you know, the Pike's movements and all. And it was funny how Boba, you know, was talking to the one cyborg guy who had the cybernetic eye. And he's like saying, keep an eye out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's yeah. like, oh, yeah, it's like, oh, sorry for that reference. Yeah, but mm-hmm. uh, And he's like, no, man, it's like, I, I like my new eye, you know, but uh yeah, so more pikes were coming in on the transport ship onto Mos Espa. And uh, it looks like uh, at the end of the episode there, Boba was preparing for war, basically. Yeah. Yeah, it's 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 prepared. And because Bo- like Phoenix is telling him, they're coming. And he's like, we will be ready. He's got his Rancor. He's got his cybernetic army. He's got a yeah. Wookiee that's on... on uh, uh, on this planet somewhere. Yeah. That Wookiee yeah. they 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 didn't bring this Wookiee character in for right. two little up scenes for episodes. No. No, I, you, you're gonna use the Yeah. Yeah, it's good it's either it's either gonna join with the pikes or it's gonna, like you said, become part of Boba. Uh, yeah. work for Boba Fett. And yeah. I, I could see it working for Boba Fett because I could see the thing coming back either Either kills one, kills the huts, and mm-hmm. brings back something from them, and saying like, you know, the huts are dead. Yeah. And I, I, sir, you, you gave me a chance here. Yeah. I wanted to pr- repay you. And yeah. Boba's like, okay, you, if you're gonna be like this, come, right. come with us, join, join us. Right. You, you served me. You're all good. Yeah, and I, I remember before the series started, we saw in the trailers, you know, like Boba sitting around a round table like at a Mm -hmm. meal with all of these like crime lords or something so Mm -hmm. i mean i think that's that's coming soon where he's going to try to get them on his side and be like look you know we can work together you know we don't have to kill each other we can work together and maybe that's to consolidate power uh to go up against the pikes maybe we shall see. Uh, yeah, and, that 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 that's it. Or it could be after the battle with the pikes and be like, "Listen, I took care of the pikes. I took care of the right. big problem around here. Right. You you guys have underestimated me. Right. Don't don't be underestimating me. I'm not I'm not going to rule you with fear. But yeah. if we all work together, yeah, no problems. We all make money. We're all good yeah. by the end of the day. Yeah, and I still think that Crimson Dawn is going to show up in some way, shape, or form. I mean, maybe the Pikes were working for Crimson Dawn. I don't know. Maybe they're like a smaller subsidiary to Crimson Dawn. We shall see. But uh, couldn't you just ima- could you just imagine Burley, uh, Darth Maul making an appearance in the Book of Boba Fett? That would be oh, yeah, yeah, like in the final episode or something. You know, he shows up or something. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, I know that they, they, they've teased him for the uh, the Kenobi show. Yeah, Darth Maul. But you know, because of the Han Solo film, from where that kind of take place, I would imagine. Well, actually, he couldn't come because if if canon serves from the animated series, I mean, he dies mm-hmm. uh, uh, when Luke is still a boy and when Obi Wan is on oh. Tatooine protecting him. You know, he goes to. Tatooine and he confronts Obi-Wan again, Darth Maul, and they have a final duel and Obi-Wan takes him out. So yeah, he couldn't come. Uh, you know, because the the time period between Solo and Boba Fett, it's probably a good 20 years or so. So yeah. Okay. Yeah, maybe see, maybe see, 10 15 see, see, 20 that years. I didn't yeah. know. I never watched any of these shows. So Yeah. Yeah. And I knew so, I knew he eventually gets like I know he doesn't die in the Phantom Menace, and they never brought him back for the films for whatever reason. Yeah, they brought him into the animated series. Uh, you know, they brought him into uh, 
uh, I'm trying to remember the animated series. Uh, well, Rebels. he was in the he was in the end of the Clone Wars, uh, mm-hmm. in the fun, uh, final couple of seasons of the Clone Wars, and then uh, uh, Star Wars Rebels. He was also in that series as well. And I think at the end of Rebels, uh, they showed him go to Tatooine and have that final encounter with Obi Wan. He he catches up to Obi Wan and Obi Wan takes him out finally. So, mm-hmm. but. Uh, yeah, but I mean, the time of Solo and the time frame Solo, it's still, you know, early on in the Imperial years. So, you know, after episode three, so between three and four. So, uh, yeah. But anyway, uh, maybe whoever else is uh, controlling Crimson Dawn now, maybe Amelia Clark's character, who knows, uh, Kira. Uh, maybe we could see that. I, I doubt it, but I still think Crimson Dawn's going to have some kind of influence. But anyway, exciting times, and we're looking forward to Chapter 4 next week, and we will be, be bringing it to you here on uh, Star Wars Republic. So I've been your host, Expat, along with my co-host, Burley of Burleman Gaming, and we hope to catch you in the next chapter for the book of Boba Fett next week when we uh, record our episode, which will go in early access to uh, Patreon at patreon.com slash the arena underscore podcast for the first two days in early access and ad free. And then after that, it will go public to our YouTube channel at uh, youtube.com slash the arena production. So anyway, this has been star Wars Republic and we hope to catch you in the next one. So take care, everyone. Peace out. Remember, the Sith were right.